Hello and welcome to another episode of the Make It Epic Wedding Podcast. You're with Tim and Matt. Mate, how are you? It's, it's been a while. It has been a while, mate. What has been happening in, in your world? Hello, Tim. Uh, mate, a lot. It's definitely been a while. We haven't jumped on uh, and had a good chat for a little bit. We've uh, we've been trying to be efficient and uh, record a few episodes and get them all sorted. And then, um, yeah, then we've had a bit of a hiatus because we've had a little guest enter the world on my end of things. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, we've had a tell little us, Tell us about that, mate. Congratulations. Thanks, mate. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been exciting. It's been a big couple of weeks. Um, yeah, we've had little Oliver a couple of weeks ago now, um, which is exciting and it's pretty awesome. So uh, yeah, finally meet him um, because yeah, we, we never knew what we were having. So it's all been a little bit of this like surprise uh, goodness. And um, yeah, That's finally met him and <laughs> it's epic. Eh? It's like it's such a unique experience and so yeah. rewarding it, it and does, so cool. Yeah, it changes the outlook on life hundred percent. Hundred percent, it does. Like I remember Definitely when, does. yeah, like when our girls like came into the world, it was just, I don't know, like you just you just look at life differently now that you have a little human that you know you need to take care of and keep alive. <laughs> Yeah, like legit, hey. And then you're like, just like the smallest little things you'll like wake up to or like, I remember like the first night, like I think we were in hospital. Yeah, it must have been the first night we were in hospital and like he was there. We like fell asleep and he's a bit of a sleeper, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's great for me. Uh, great for Jess. Like you'll probably, you know, sleep at least three to four hours at a time oh, minimum, I hate um, you. <laughs> which is great. Um, but yeah, the first night we didn't really like really know what was going on. And obviously it's all new to us and we're in hospital and like we fell asleep at whatever time and um, like sleeping on this bloody hospital plank this timber Mate, plank they are much. the worst hey. <laughs> so bad <laughs> this is so the bad. worst experience of hospital it's pretty bad from us eh? like as men yeah <laughs> like everything like, our wives go through and we're complaining about the chair <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. i'm still broken from it and that was like two and a half weeks ago <laughs> um but like yeah i remember just like having this moment of like I sat up in the middle of the night and like, I looked at the time and it was like, let's just say like we went to bed at like 12 and I looked at the time it was 4 a.m. I was like, oh my goodness, what's happened? And I looked across at like he, where he was sleeping. He was sleeping like Jeff was in like the hospital bed. He was in the middle and then I was like sleeping on the like timber plank next to it, like next to him. And I just sat up and looked across at him and I was just like, is he like, have I missed something? Is he still alive? Like what's happened to you? Just because yeah, like he didn't like make that. a sound for like three or four hours and I like we just weren't used to it and didn't really know the process. So it's all been very strange. Um but yeah, so rewarding so far and loving it. Um and yeah, that's probably why we've had a bit of a hiatus from uh I guess yeah, I think it's like from our end. People probably won't notice it though, because like we've still been dropping episodes weekly. Because <laughs> we have been efficient AF. We had we had a couple of podcasts in the backlog and now we have zero. So <laughs> it's time <laughs> yeah. for a catch up. <laughs> we're back onto it. So we're hopefully gonna get this stuff record get this stuff edited and uh, out this week still. <laughs> yeah we'll we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, man, look, it's, it's, yeah, look, it's pretty crazy. I think you're going to see a couple of changes, um, like from, from your end now that you have a, a family, it'd be interesting to see kind of what happens from there. Like I, I know for, for me, um, you know, like once kind of like kids come along, um, you just look at things differently. Um, I think you look at your time differently, like as well. Um, and there's like certain aspects like within your business, you need to like set more boundaries, but more, more onto that. Cause I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a. Uh, an insight into what I've been up to the last couple of weeks because it's, you know, I haven't had any kids, but it's been bloody crazy for both of us. So you've I hope had a you've, wild uh, hope few you've been weeks. well rested, mate, because <laughs> that, oh, that is, um, yeah, that is some lucky shite that you got a good kid that sleeps through the night. I cannot say That's the same great. for myself. Not even through the night, through the day too. <laughs> like oh, just man. like four yeah. out, four hour naps at a time, <laughs> wakes up, eats, goes back to sleep. Um, oh. Look, it's not always yeah. sunshines and rainbows, but it's pretty good so far. Yeah. Well, as you know, it's been what my my eldest Willow is three years old, and um, yeah, she still sleeps in the bed. So yeah, yeah, cool stuff. Love that. That's good. <laughs> yeah, we had to take it to Tresillion <laughs> twice. <laughs> oh yeah, to get some Perfect. sleep training. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what you want. But our youngest, like she, yeah, she's an absolute dream when it comes to sleeping through the night. So yeah, not all sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> At least you've got the one, good, one good kid. That's always helpful. <laughs> yeah, one good. Yeah, they're both. They're both. But um, how's uh, so how's Jess, mate? How's how's your wife? How was the how was the process again? Back into the swing of um, photographing weddings and doing the things you love to do. 
yeah, mate, she's killing it. She's just doing all the good mum things she should be doing, I guess, uh, you know, and just loving it and uh, making my job very easy so that I can get back into the swing of it a little bit. Um, obviously, yeah. I had a, I think I maybe like got people to help me for three or four weddings, something like that. You helped me with one of them, which was great. And then, uh, yeah, I had a couple of other people help me out for a couple of weddings. Um, one of them was a bit of a stitch up. It was pretty much like we found out Jess was going into labor and I was like, I was meant to be shooting a wedding that next day. And I was like, <laughs> all went around everybody. Uh, so yeah, so I got some help with that one. And then, so that was probably like, yeah, maybe four weddings, something like that. And then now I am back into it. So over the weekend, I went straight back into it, dived headfirst into three weddings over the weekend, which were um, amazing weddings. So good. Um, had the best time over the weekend, just kind of like getting back into the swing of it. And yeah, some epic venues and people. Um, I think the first one pretty much back was with you um, at Ben Dooley last week, which was sick. And that was, uh, yeah. that was pretty wild. <laughs> yeah. For, that a, was, for, a bro- well, actually, for a bride, that was 38 weeks yeah. pregnant. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I actually, because I shot three weddings, I feel like that was so long ago, but now that we have, and I forgot we haven't spoken about it yet, but yes, <laughs> uh, very wild. Um, probably one of the most, um, I don't know, sexually induendo. Is that the right word? I don't really know. <laughs> well, uh, well, when your MC <laughs> what, walks in with some like, um, some leather pants with his ass hanging out, like, you know, it's going to be yeah. an interesting night. That's a vibe. <laughs> yeah. shout, shout out to uh, Holy Matramonti, killed it. So Silver yeah. and MC, that was uh, that was the first time working with him. It was a it was a bloody vibe. Yeah, it was a good time. If you uh, <laughs> if you need someone in your life that's going to spice up your day uh, and <laughs> get a, go a little bit left of left of center or right of center, depending which way you hang, um, you know, definitely <laughs> check out him. He's a legend. Well, and, uh, there were yeah. no secrets with those leather pants. So <laughs> no, nothing, nothing left to the imagination. <laughs> Uh, it, was a, it was a good time. And if you haven't checked him out, probably should because, uh, yeah, he's pretty wild and pretty out there. And I don't know, we always get asked about, like, I suppose that's something that, like, uh, we get asked a lot is, like, you know, we want someone who's a bit different for our wedding as a celebrant, uh, doesn't want, the cl- like, the classic stock standard uh, inverted commas celebrant that you see every single day of the week, um, you know, or that you typically would think about. Um, we have a few up our sleeve. Um, we've had Adam on before. He's a bit, he's a bit out there, a bit different. Um, but, yeah, look, I think... Monty is next level. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you when your celebrate comes out like with a whip, some cowboy boots, and like cracking the whip around, like yeah. going, this is not your average ceremony. Like you get some pretty good ideas how it's going to go. <laughs> it was it was wild, but the couple were amazing too. And they're like the thing is, is that like this couple also were like a little bit alternative, I suppose. Like we walked into groom prep and like Parkway drives on absolutely blasting, uh, yeah. which was pretty epic and. Um, yeah, I had such a good day with those guys, but like, I just found it like yeah. so refreshing because they, it was just different, I suppose, for like, you know, what we would normally do. He was wearing a full yeah. black suit with a black hat on, <laughs> you know, um, it was pretty sick. How funny was the brief though? Like, oh yeah, the groom doesn't like, uh, getting his photo taken and mate, he was the most photogenic person of the day. <laughs> he was loving it. I feel like I, I, I would literally just read like, before we jumped up here, I read to Tim, like, you know, like she sent me an email after a sense of sneak peeks to it. She was like, oh, like, even though we thought that Brett didn't really like photos, uh, turns out we were all wrong and he loves the camera. <laughs> um, and it was, yeah, it was epic. And I, I suppose for everyone listening, like if you're a little bit apprehensive about having your photos taken, your videos and all that sort of stuff. Um, Brett just had a good time. Hey, he literally just dived headfirst into it. He was like all about it. He wanted to have a good time and um, make sure he enjoyed the day. And he just took it on and didn't really let the like the feels of being apprehensive about having his photo taken uh, affect him at all. And because he went hard at it, like the photos are epic because he was just like <laughs> rocking it and didn't yeah. really care. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Can't wait to go through that. But um, yeah. yeah, look, man, it's been. It's it's been like crazy, right? Because I had I had a triple header last weekend. Originally, I had two two weddings. I had like a the Saturday and then the Monday. Uh, but then someone had to go have a baby, and uh, I had to go shoot for them. Um, <laughs> so I went from so like Saturday I was in Bathurst, and then Sunday I had to drive <laughs> to Canberra, <laughs> hit a, hit a kangaroo, yeah, My bad. and then um, <laughs> bat- battery died. You know, I had a um, a fucking didn't you hit a wombat as well? I did hit a one about the week before. Yep. I'll, uh, I'll, get, to that. <laughs> I'll get to that. Um, and then, yeah, uh, Sunday, I came to a wedding. And then Monday, I had a wedding for these absolute legends in um, uh, at the Cove in Jervis Bay. So that was that was pretty cool. It was a 
so many thousands of kilometers in those three days. Yeah, you were all over the place, and uh, it was it was definitely a big weekend. And I appreciate you helping me out. That was for sure. And I know the couple that uh, you shot for me for were stoked that you were there. I suppose they were even more excited because they listened to the podcast. So that was sick because they were just yeah, like, "Oh, sick. that's amazing! We know what Tim's like, and that was cool." So uh, yeah, but it, it's been a big couple of weeks, and I guess uh, we haven't really said what we're talking about today, Tim. But if you haven't realised, we're just having a general chit chat today. We're just going to talk. Uh, let's do a bit of catch talk, up. Talk a bit of smack, yeah. It's, yeah. Well, it's been it's been a while. It's been a while. So let's let, let's have a bit of a catch up. I know, yeah. You've had you've had a baby. I've I've had a big couple of weeks, and yeah. Um, I actually I actually spent five days at the the Lonely Hearts film camp. Um, what we've two, been uh, we've been talking about this, haven't we? We've been trying to work out how do we how do we like <laughs> wrap this up for you because I know uh, you were telling me how rewarding and amazing and epic it was, uh, and that. Yeah, you got a lot of information out of it and a lot of goodness that's going to, uh, you know, bring value to the couples that you are serving. Oh, um, huge. Absolutely, absolutely yeah. huge. So um, so the Lonely Hearts Film Camp, uh, just as a little bit of a kind of a backstory. So it's run by Grace and Andrew from Bottle Brush Films. So if you don't know them, they are literally probably the best and like most creative um, like wedding videography, like business in Australia and huge huge inspiration for me i absolutely love them you know they are both such a vibe and so much fun so yeah, i got to spend a whole kind of five days like with them and some of the worlds and australia's best like filmmakers and storytellers and dude it was crazy i don't know how we we might have to we might have to ask these guys to come on and uh give us a bit of a, a rundown of it because there is so much that happened and, you know, I don't want to give you just little bite-sized pieces. I want to kind of make sure I can give you as much value as I can and kind of like run for like the whole camp, what happened, you know, some of the, uh, some of the things that we learned because, mate, after those five days, my brain was fried with how much information there was. It's just like we band camp, so right? Much. But for videographers? Yeah. Just, yeah. Just no flutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, classic. I, uh, I, I know that, uh, yeah, like I really don't think we're going to be able to wrap this up in one podcast, that's for sure. And if we do, it's probably going to be one that's dedicated just to this because, um, yeah, we, we should just, definitely, yeah. It, it wasn't just for, like, obviously it's all based for videographers, but it's not just, I guess, around video skills. So to not, speak. not at all. Around it, there was photographers the there. And everything, right? Mm. Yeah. Like there was obviously like, it's a, it's a camp. Uh, made for filmmakers, All right? Filmmakers yeah. and storytellers. Um, but yeah, there was there was a bunch of photographers there, um, and you know, there's a lot of like photo, like video, like businesses. And mate, like the amount of like quality that exists, like within Australia, is huge. We had a couple of, you know, we called it like the Sunday like roast, where everyone kind of like brought a USB because there was zero reception, zero service, <laughs> and played some of our films and. I was so, so impressed with like the quality of these, like the, these films and like the storytelling, like it was phenomenal, man. Like absolutely phenomenal. And some of these kids are like in their early twenties. It's crazy. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. And I, I suppose like we always say like, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of weddings going around and how busy the, you know, the wedding industry is. And it just goes to show that it's not just like, obviously there's people from all over the world. Right. And like, the wedding industry in itself all over the world is huge, uh, but it's pretty cool to see uh, such a big, I guess, film camp being run in Australia uh, and being run well and people coming from overseas to attend it as well, which I think is pretty damn yeah. awesome. Well, like, um, look at it, right? Like yeah. if there are so many like photographer based like camps or like photographer based kind of um, like events and expos and like what have you, but there's not really that much for filmmakers and it, and it's something that's probably like really missing in Australia where like we, we need a, like something to bring filmmakers like together. Um, and it's quite important because like you think of the process of filmmaking, it's, it's quite a lonely process, right? Lonely like, we hearts, spend actually. hours and days <laughs> and weeks like editing film by ourselves. Like f filmmaking can be a very lonely process. So like Grace and Andrew, um, they had their first camp in like 2020, which I was spewing, I missed out on. Um, but like it was their, like their idea to bring something specifically for filmmakers and their idea like to showcase, you know what, like, you know, let's have something just for filmmakers in Australia 
and somewhere where we can bring the best and most like creative like filmmakers in one place and just like chat all things filmmaking, all things storytelling, like all things creative business. And mate, I was on fire. Like I loved the whole like all five days. Like it was it was such like an immense like amount of like knowledge and value that was like distilled to all of us. And that was something crazy. It was like sixty of us or something. Like it was nuts. And you know, we had the likes of like White in uh, White in Reverie. So they're um, literally like one of like my favorite filmmakers in uh, in the US. Uh, we had uh, Creative Like Weddings, uh, whose films and photos are freaking phenomenal. Um, you know, we had breakout sessions with different um, like with different aspects of like filmmaking. You know, it was it was just. It was just incredible to see like the wide variety of like skills like within filmmaking and styles, like not just for like those that were there, but from like all the presenters as well. Uh, we had Rick Liston who owns um, Wedding Workflows and like he gave a phenomenal like talk on the last day just about like creative business and like what does that like business mean to you and how you can um, create like a lifestyle business like for you by like basically ensuring that you can get your time back by utilizing, um, you know, staff or outside outsourcing certain aspects within your business. So you have more time to focus on the things that are important. So I thought that was a, that was a really, really interesting kind of like final, um, presentation for the weekend. And it really gave a lot of us like, you know, like peaked out easy to be like, Oh, okay. So, like you're saying that we can, we can get some help in certain aspects within our business. So we don't have to continually struggle because I don't know about you, mate, but think of all the roles that we do, like in our business, right? Oh, it's wild. Like I, yeah, I would say I do too many and I know that. Um, but I also, I don't know, have control issues, I guess. I like to do a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know what it is, but maybe, uh, maybe we need yeah. to get Rick on it. We can, we can have a chat with Rick. Cause, uh, yeah, we'll just get, we're the probably, there's probably a lot of people that need to talk me into doing different things. Um, no, I don't know. I feel like for me, I've been doing a, this for a long time now and I've always done it myself. Um, and so I've just kind of like used to it. And at the moment, cause we're in like peak season and it's busy. I find it hard to, uh, find the time to, I guess, prepare and outsource some of the stuff that I would like to. And maybe in the downtime, I'll learn. <laughs> maybe I'll listen to you because I know you're a big fan of outsourcing uh, for sure. Uh, I had a question about your Lonely Hearts film campaign. Like, is there like, obviously like, you know, you've spoken a lot of value about like for you and like, obviously for like the people that attended there, what's the like, you know, if you're a couple and you're listening, like what's one thing that you learnt if I'm throwing into the bus here, but what's one thing maybe you've learnt or uh, from that film camp that like, I think it's going to serve your clients better, would you say? Um, I think it's, it's just more so in how to like really keep a good eye on, you know, all the aspects within your business that are, that are happening, right? Like you want to make sure that you, you know, create the best work possible. You want to make sure that you provide like a very high level of like client service. So like we, we got a lot from like all the different presenters um, or had like different styles and some were focused on like just the filmmaking. Some were focused on, you know, like right running the business. Some were focused on like, you know, like how can you get more time back so you can like spend it uh, like within your business in things that like can serve you and your couples better. But, like if you're a couple and you're listening and you know, you're, like your videographer, your photographer like, is going to these lengths to, you know, like improve like their experience, like for you, like, what does that tell you? Right. Like, does that tell you you've got someone that's like really invested, like within you, like their business and like your wedding, like, or like, does it just say, oh, well, you know, like if he's spending all this time and money, like just like, like playing around in the, <laughs> out in the bush with a bunch of other creatives. Like, what does it, what does it tell you, mate? Yeah, hundred percent. Like, I think you are getting what you pay for, right? And it's not a, it wasn't a, like it's not a cheap uh, exercise to go and do that. Plus, you're also away from the family for what five days, something like that, which is pretty crazy. And yes, you're having fun, and it's a wild time and all that sort of goodness. But it's wild because everyone's so excited to be there too, right? Um, I saw some, I saw some footage of like the, the final night party uh, that everybody was getting into, and that looked like a fun time. <laughs> um, yeah, it was pretty wild. It was pretty wild. Um, was there anything yeah. that you like uh, from other like films and like people that were there? Like, is there anything you saw that you were like, wow, that is epic. Yeah. Like something different. Yeah, I could, I could go on like a Pick lot one. about this. So 
Oh. One, only one. Let's. I'm, I'm going to put so one of the one of the presenters, Dave. Right. So Dave um, has a business in uh, in Victoria. So it's photo and video, um, and he actually shoots photo, video, hybrid by himself. Crazy, right? Absolutely crazy. So he'll have like his camera is like set up on like on a tripod, and then it'll be like a gimbal on the tripod with a Raven Eye, um, and a Raven Eye is basically like a like a, a robotic arm essentially, and like from his phone. He can like track subjects so he can record like video tracking a subject as well as like taking photos. So we had a bit of a breakaway session with Dave and he like, he showcased, you know, what, like what he does like with the first look and, you know, different aspects of the day of it on how he would like manage that process. And like, it's something that I could never do, but it was just interesting oh, to see like <laughs> how, yeah, that's crazy. Like, and we, we did ask Dave, uh, at the, at the on the last day for Q and A I'm like, why do you love like what you do? Dave's response was, I love the chaos. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely ca- like, I don't know. That just brings me a bit of anxiety a little bit like around like trying to make sure you capture it all. Obviously he's a master at what he does. Um, it just sounds yeah, like, but way too yeah, like, and, and these are the things that we mentioned, right? Like, and like there's sacrifices that have to be made in certain aspects, but like, it's a, it's a style that, you know, um, and especially like Dave, his couples uh, can be a little bit uh, more on, on the alternative side. Um, so, you know, they don't want a um, multiple people there. They don't want multiple ven- ven- uh, vendors like capturing like everything that's happening. So like for his couples, he's really like found a niche of like what works for him. Um, and he's doing really well. Like his films are phenomenal as well. But I'm going to I'm gonna throw one more in there. And um, Kalen from White and Reverie, absolute gun like on the tech side so absolutely phenomenal so we had a breakaway session with Callan and he showed us some gimbal skills and mate i don't know about you but if you've seen like some gimbals and videographers like like, utilizing gimbals like on a wedding day like it's it's not an easy thing right they can be a bit heavy like they're a bit bulky and and the one that Callan uses is like this big like ronin square looking thing and mate it is hectic but the footage that he gets from it and like how he dials in the settings um, and just his understanding of the tech like allows him to really like capture like these like beautifully timed like moments and like these beautiful like gimbal moves. And like you said, like it is a tool. It's a tool to use on the de- on the wedding day. It's not something that you would use all day, um, but it's, it's definitely a signature kind of look that he does with his films, um, him and his wife, Christine that it just takes it to a different level. And there's a reason why they were invited as presenters like to the Lonely Hearts film camp. And it's because they are the best at what they do. So that was, uh, yeah, that was, that was another hefty one, but I have to, I have to throw it in there. I've got one more. I've got one more. <laughs> <laughs> one, three, 10, no worries. Are you contemplating going back to a gimbal? Are you contemplating getting your um, gimbal back out and having a crack at it sometimes? <laughs> Because you're you're a, you're a uh, yeah. freehand kind of guy, uh, you think about yeah. Going... So for, look for the last year, like I've been handheld, right? Um, I love kind of like the look of it. I love like the, the the feel of it. But there is times where I wish I had, you know, something to like smooth out a bit of motion, like, whether that's like a walking shot or like just to kind of like add it in. Um, but like for me, the added complexity, like of a gimbal, um, can sometimes like feel like a little bit restrictive. Um, but like we were at the wedding last week, right. And I was like, oh man, like if I had a gimbal right now, like I could have used a couple of shots. Um, and it's, it's made me think like, do I, you know, like utilize a gimbal for some part, some parts of the day. And yeah, I'm still having a good think about it. Um, but like, that's a good thing about <laughs> filmmaking, right? Like it's like, it's, it's a creative process. Like you can, you can do like whatever like you want. And for me, I'm always looking for new ways to, you know, like up the game, up the skill, um, and up the, like the quality like of my films. Um, and I, for me, it needs to serve a purpose, right? Like it's not something that I would use all day, but like potentially it is something that I could use like at for some, like some shots as well. So yeah. Watch this space. We'll see what happens, mate. Amazing. All right. Hit us. Number three. What, number what's three. the third thing you, uh, yeah, 
third, fourth, tenth. I don't know. I don't know where we're up to. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll, what, we'll keep up. This is, this is why we need to have um, a separate podcast for this. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe a, a whole few. podcast, not not just an episode, a whole oh, podcast. <laughs> I, like Grace and Andrew, if you guys are listening, uh, we have to get you guys on to discuss this because there is just so much that we can go into. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so. Shout out to my boy, Ricardo. So Ricardo um, is a, um, a wedding filmmaker. Um, he's one half of creative um, like weddings um, in Europe. And they do some amazing like destination uh, photo and uh, videos. Um, and he has just such a unique style. Like in, imagine an, an Italian, Italian dude, right? Sexy AF right, with a bit of a beard. Right, and he comes to you and he's like, no bullshit. <laughs> You're really painting I a just... good picture here. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, it was, it, it was just, it was just an absolute legend. But like in his breakaway session, um, we had, uh, we had a couple, uh, we had a couple, um, who were an actual couple who modeled for us, like Jake and Sabrina, absolute legends. Um, so they just rocked it. And Ricardo is, I suppose his wedding films are very, like romantic and cinematic, um, but then completely non-intrusive. So there, there is no direction whatsoever. Not like not zero direction. And you should see the quality of the films (laughs) that he gets. Right. And and it was something that we like, we kind of struggled to understand. We're like, how are you getting like couples to, you know, like do this without direction. And like, he's like silent. I say silent, Like this is not your moment. Like, this is not your day. This is not your wedding. Like, you are there to capture. Capture. And, like, it, it did um, raise a few questions, right? Like, well, how much direction, like, should we give couples? Um, and, like, I think, you know, European weddings and Australian weddings, like, are a bit different. But, like, the simple fact is he shoots in a completely, like, like directionless environment. Like, he just completely captures, like, what is happening and like it's it's kind of similar like to us, but we still do like to provide like a little bit of like direction as well. Like it's that Some whole props and tips and hints. Yeah, you know? like it's it's not like we're we're posing, but we like we want to essentially like provide like a little bit of direction or like some prompts just so you you can be you. Um, but yeah, it, it was quite phenomenal how like Ricardo worked and some of yeah some of his. <laughs> Man, oh, like some of just like his words and what he says and what he does is just an absolute classic. Like it's just classic. I I love it, man. I absolutely love it. And I know it's brought a lot of discussion, like in um the Lonely Hearts film uh, camp chats about you know like is this something that we can try and implement for our own businesses and like you know not be so like involved, like not treat the wedding like such a production. Um, but it's something, yeah, it's something that definitely deserves its own kind of like discussion point because we can go on and on about this. But yeah, he just brought a different perspective to something I, I feel quite strongly about as well. It's definitely a unique uh, way to capture a wedding. And it's not, uh, it's, I feel like you, you've got to be a specific person to want that kind of vibe. Because I know a lot of people say to us, oh, we don't want to be posed, but we also have no idea what we're doing. And I feel like yeah, 100%, 100%. Um, that's where it becomes like, it's probably a bit of a conversation. I'm sure he's like relationship with couples and things like that in the lead up to the wedding talk. He would talk them through his process and um, how it is that he achieves what he achieves. Cause obviously his stuff's amazing. Um, and if he can do that without realistically having to say too much to them and he's like a fly on the wall capturing everything, that's pretty bloody epic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like, like we, you know, a couple of guys have mentioned as well, like it's, it's probably difficult to capture like that, like type of like content, like in Australia without some form of direction. Um, but it like, it, it does beg the question, right? Like when you choose your photographer and your videographer, like how, how much detail are you paying towards like their particular style of how they are on the day? Like if you're listening as a couple, do you like you you see the end product right like you see the photos and you see the videos and you can relate to that you can connect with that but like do you ask the question of like well what's like the process of how you capture that like during the day like how involved are you like you know weddings are a special like event they're not like they're not a production like and if you wanted a production like you need to be specific on who you choose for that um because you do have um i think like 
how how do we put how do we put this nicely, Matt? Help me out here. Um, mental blank. I have no idea. Baby yeah. brain. So, <laughs> <laughs> can I just if I don't uh, know what to say? Can I say baby brain from now on, and that'll be okay for the next couple of weeks? Yeah, yeah, you can try. <laughs> you can try. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I think like as a couple, when you choose like your photographer and your videographer, like. Yes, you're looking at the end product. You're looking at these deliverables and what that what the photos look like and what the videos look like. But like, it's just as important to understand who it is on your wedding day. You know, like what is their process of like capturing like those moments? Because um, like, if you wanted like a, a high end production, you know, like you, there's some sacrifices you're going to have to make in terms of you know, like if you want those beautiful shots, like they don't just happen naturally. Like not all of them do. Like high end production is probably the wrong word as well. If you want like a like a very like high end, yeah, high end production is probably not the right word even in that because you can still get a high end feel to your wedding, uh, but it has to be like forced a lot more potentially. Yeah. Um, for some very specific shots, and I think uh, you know that's something that is very different to potentially what we do and quite the opposite. Like, yes, we still offer a high end experience, but the production aspect is a lot more, uh, you and your interpretation to what we're asking you to do. Yeah, exactly. Um, like we, yeah. Well, I suppose what I mean by that is like, we don't treat your wedding like a production in the fact that, you know, you're not actors. All right. So we're not going to like, you know, provide like a script to do this, like, you know, this crazy shot of a couple walking up a mountain, for instance, right? Like, because that would, how much time will that take out of, out of your wedding day? Um, but like, what, I think the point that we're trying to make is that there's diff, there's different aspects um, like of like vendors that you can, uh, you can really like relate to. Um, and whether that's like their particular style or whether it's just the, the fact that, you know, their end product is like something that you can relate to. Like, it's not just the one thing. That's not just the only thing that you should focus on is what I'm trying to say. I get it um, completely. And like, I think that at the end of the day, like I, I'm, I feel like lately I've been getting more and more, uh, I guess, invested and passionate maybe around making sure that you're selecting the people like, you know, when it comes to like this, you know, production or, you know, the vibe of the day. Um, like, oh, I suppose like everyone's niching slightly differently and everyone's vibe is slightly different. Um, and everyone has a different want and need to the end result for photo, video. Maybe it's not even photo and video. Let's just take it back a step even further. Like maybe it's your venue. Maybe it's your, I don't know, celebrant. Maybe it's your makeup artist, whatever it is. I feel like you really need to look, um, at what the overall picture is and the end result and look at like a multitude of different, um, settings, scenarios, weddings. Um, if there's someone that's shooting a lot or doing a lot of work, you're going to see a lot of their different styles um, out there. And if that resonates with you, that's amazing. And then meet up with them and see, you know, what that process looks like. Um, yeah, and then you're sure. going to get a real feel and understanding of how they achieve that at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> and I know like for, for you and I, like we, we love like those natural like moments, like that happen like naturally as part of the day because it's you, like it tells your story. And like for, like for me, when I'm creating like a film, when I'm creating you like your story, like what I really love is the aspects that are so you that I can turn into your story, you know, like staging a, like staging a moment, staging like something fake, like that's what, that's what for me, that's what movies are. Right. And like, 100%. you know, a couple aren't actors. Right. And like for me, and it's along the lines of like uh, Ricardo's, um, I suppose, like premise, like during camp is that it is not your day and they are not actors and this is not a movie film. Like what you're doing is creating a story specifically like for them. So like you capture the moments that are them, right? Yeah. It's, it's definitely, as I said, it's definitely, I feel like, and uh, we spoke about this prior to this, to chatting about this. And I was like, man, that's wild because I feel like you definitely need to have the, like that, that client needs to, or, you know, the couple that you're shooting, uh, need to understand that. And like, for me, that's a wild concept because I know that, uh, you know, like most people have no idea what they're doing. Um, and that would probably bring them a bit of anxiety as well in a sense of like, what do you mean? You just stand there and capture everything. Um, obviously he's 
got this down pat and he's killing it. Um, and that's awesome. Um, and I'm slightly jealous cause I wish I could do that. Uh, <laughs> to be honest. Um, <laughs> Same, I remember Same. like just go talking about like from, for me from the weekend, I was thinking about like, just then about like capturing moments and things like that. I, I remember on the weekend, um, I shot, uh, at Jasper's in Berry, Um, and we were just standing there and we're like, the couple were hanging out with each other and I was just being a bit of a smart ass and, you know, um, being a bit sassy and they were like real close and snuggly and they were looking all cute and stuff, but they both looked like they were like, uh, almost in a little bit of pain or like a bit sad or something. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> like Benny funny jokes, funny. It, it looked, no, well, I wasn't even talking to him at the time. I was just like kind of shooting and I got a little bit closer to him and I was looking to my camera. I was like, geez, I didn't know he were here for a funeral. <laughs> and they like oh, just wow. like lost, they just like lost it. Um, and like probably my favorite photo from the day is like, them just like losing it after I said that I didn't realize I was here for a funeral. Um, I was like, don't have to be so morbid. You're not here for a funeral. And I'm like, just lost it. I definitely think it's probably like, yeah, my favorite photo from the whole day, but it's probably just because of something that's popped into my mind at that time. And it's like, I suppose it just, there's nothing typically like we're trying not to plan things and we're trying not to, you know, uh, force moments on things. So I, that's why like, when I see stuff like that, I just try and make jokes and I try and have conversations with people, but yeah, when I take it back a step and I think about what he does, I'm like, how does he not say anything to people? Like, that's mental. Um, it's pretty yeah. cool, but like, I definitely think I'm all like, for it. We've got, we got a thing, like, it, it's a potentially different countries as well, like different, yes, like, different type true. of people, like not necessarily like Australian as well. Um, but, and that, that was the best thing. Like, and that's probably the number one, like take away from camp is that like, there is so much like variety and filmmaking is such an art, right? That, Everyone has their own style, but the end, like the end product, for, um, the end product is them, right? Like, and it's so, it's so amazing. Like it is so amazing. Like the different styles that I've seen at camp were just absolutely phenomenal, but like it just worked so well because it is them. Um, and that's, and that's really a big thing, um, that I've seen and, like, those that are really doing well, are just so true to who they are. Hmm. Very true. And like, I suppose if you are true to who you are, like at the end of the day, uh, you know, and this probably isn't just from a filmmaking or a photo or a, you know, wedding sense, uh, but in general, uh, for everybody, uh, if you are true to who you are, you're going to enjoy what you're doing. Like, and that's as simple yeah. as that. You're going to be passionate about it. You're going to be excited about it. You're going to be, have all the emotions about it that are positive and probably not so negative. You know, like I think about whenever I'm most excited about something like, I put a lot of bloody energy and about like a lot of effort into that. Right. Um, and this probably comes back to a little bit of, you know, um, like we talk about this so much on this podcast, but you know, like do things that make you happy. Like if you're excited by it, of course it's going to make you happy. And that's not just from a filmmaking perspective or a, you know, photo makeup hair, whatever it is, like it's always going to instill the good vibes. And that's what we're all about. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. Absolutely. Love. I love it. Well, Mate, I, uh, I got a, I, I, I got two, uh, maybe one question, which I feel like, um, I don't know. I don't know why I just came up with this and I think it probably would be handy to start doing, but have you got any, like, um, it might not be to do with Lonely Heart Field Camp and you know, whatever, just in general, we might start doing something like this each podcast potentially, but, um, like, is there any like nitpicky things you want to talk about? Things that are annoying you at the moment, anything that makes you excited at the moment? Like, is it just a random Tim chat? Goodness. Does that make sense? I don't know if it does. Anyway. It does. It does. It does. Um, look, we, we've got a, we've got a bunch of different ideas for the, for this podcast, I think. And there's like, there's lots of ways <laughs> that we, we want to take it. <laughs> tell, tell me more. Tell me more. Um, and, Should we just have look, a planning I'll, session I'll, live on the podcast? <laughs> Yeah, why not? Why not? Everyone, like, give us your thoughts. Like, which direction shall we take this podcast? Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, look, look, I think, like, a big one is, like, the type of business we're in. Like, it, it is a, it's a creative business, right? It's us. Um, and if we have a look at the different hats that we wear, right? We're videographer. We're photographer. Social media manager. Financial manager. Hot tax man. man. <laughs> Hi, man. <laughs> you know, uh, we like we have to run so many, and we have so many roles, and we have to run so many different tasks within our business to like keep this afloat, right? And like a big thing that's popped up is, you know, like it, it's quite easy to burn out, right? It's very Absolutely. like it's very easy to burn out, and you know, like maybe we'll save for another podcast, but like I reached like a like a critical like point of burnout probably like twelve to eighteen months ago, and I had to make some changes, right? Um, but 
looking and like talking to like so many, like so many filmmakers, so many photographers, you know, they're only maybe a couple of years in the industry. Like they're, they are full time. Um, but with everything they're doing, like it is, they're so like close to that critical, like burnout mark. And they're not like, they're not aware that like burnout is just around the corner, but there's so many aspects that you can do to really like, not just like be safe and not burn out because in our, like in our business, right. With the amount of roles that we do do, like it is so like, so imperative that we're very specific with what we do do, how we spend our time and the value that we, we do provide our clients, but we need to make sure that we look after our, ourself, right? We need to make sure we look after our time. We need to make sure that there is boundaries uh, within our business to make sure that there is longevity within the business. 100%. Love it. I feel like that's a podcast in itself. Uh, 100%. Mm. Um, my, I have one. Um, and this is like a little nitpicky thing that's just been, I, I feel like it's been around, it's been around for a long time. Yours is very uh, creative focused. Mine is a little bit more couple focused. Uh, and that is, and I feel like this is probably a topic in a podcast for itself. Uh, but couples apologizing for things that are outside of what they would see typically as the normal if that makes sense. So i.e. if they decide that they, from a photo perspective, if they decide they don't want to do prep, they go, oh, Matt, we're really sorry, but we don't want to do prep. That really irks me. I don't know why. Like, because it's not- <laughs> That about, really I, grinds my oh, gears. Mate, it annoys me. <laughs> because you know what? Like, this sounds, I don't know if this sounds bad. You can tell me if it does. Uh, but like in the nicest way possible, I don't really give a crap if you do <coughs> prep or oh. not. Like it doesn't ruin my day, right? Like- yeah, okay, right. but but I I know I know, like, I know where you're coming from, and what well, we've spoken about this like quite a fair bit, right? But like, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's coming from the premise that like we want to make sure that we we capture like the best moments of your wedding day, right? And if prep is not within you know like the best moments, or prep is not a value like to you, then 100% we're going to be like, no, nah, we, we don't need it. Like, we don't want to just capture it if that's not what you want. Because if we do capture it and it puts you in a mood, like, it's just not, like, it's not how we want to do things. And I know we feel, I know we feel the same way about this. We want to make yeah. sure that we provide the best experience possible. You know? And this is why we have a process to understand the things that you do and don't like about certain aspects, like within your wedding day. Like, what do you want included? What do you not want included? And don't apologize because you're <laughs> going to do it the way that you want to do it. Yeah. Like that, like, I think, the, I don't even think it's like the prep part or the non, like, I just think the fact that you keep apologizing to me throughout the day for things that aren't going to plan or sorry, it's taken so long. Like at the end of the day, like, you're not there to serve me. I'm there to serve you as the couple. I'm there to make sure that your day's amazing. Uh, and you're paying me to be there. So stop apologizing to me. You're like, oh man, I'm going <laughs> right, like, to, don't ever swear jar, to me, guys. <laughs> instead of a swear jar, I'm going to start a sorry jar. Every time you say you're uh, like, sorry to me on the day, I'm going to charge you like a dollar. Chill. I don't know. Chill. <laughs> I, I don't know. Anyway, so, that's so, my little, sorry, uh, sorry Matt. My little, Sorry, my little, uh, you, you owe me three dollars. Uh, that's my little <laughs> uh, other day. Uh, anyway, don't know if that's helpful for anybody. If it, uh, you know, little hot tip, maybe. Yeah, little, if you so don't if do you book Matt, please don't, please don't apologize to him. He'll get very upset. <laughs> just get like filled, my like inbox will just get filled with like, oh, sorry, Matt, but can we? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> dot dot dot. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I don't know where we're. I've, hopefully, this has been a little bit of an insight to you guys about what's been going on the last couple of weeks for me and Tim. It's been pretty wild. Uh, you yeah. Know, obviously, with babies, with uh, you know, like all the weddings we've been doing with film camps, all that goodness, plus also trying to still work on our businesses and and the podcast too, I guess, and improve that and take that to the next level. Um, there's a lot coming up, hopefully, with this podcast. We just uh, working it all out at the moment. We're doing a lot of brainstorming behind the scenes, but we always love to hear from you guys. So please do reach out because yeah. uh, at the end of the day, we wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you guys. And we want to make sure that you're getting value out of what we're doing. And uh, even though we love to come on here and talk some crap and break our day up and editing, <laughs> we love to doing whatever talk a bit of smack. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Was it so but... funny, right? I, I can't. Oh, uh, sorry. I'm going to say it. at camp, right? But, oh, camp. Uh, you're going to get like, charged oh, a dollar if you say camp one more time. Uh, all right, film camp. Yeah, we um, 
some of the guys are like, oh, do you like, do you do that? Like make it epic um, podcast. I'm like, yeah, yeah, but don't listen to it. Like, it's just me and Matt talking a bunch of smack. <laughs> <laughs> a random golden nugget here or there that oh, could help your uh, but, wedding experience. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, look, get, look, this, uh, this episode was a little bit different. Like, let us know, like, do you like us having a bit of a, you know, like directionless bit of a chat, bit of a, bit of a catch up? Um, what was going on in our brains at the time? Yeah, just, <laughs> yeah, just chat about what's uh, what's going on at the time. But um, yeah, look, thank you for listening. We really appreciate it. Um, if you found this of value, let us know. Uh, let us know how we did. Um, if you got some ideas and you'd like to yeah, potentially jump on as a guest, like we'd be more than happy to have a chat with you. Uh, but mate, it's been great. Congratulations again on little Oliver. He's a he's an Thanks, absolute please. cutie. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. And uh, it's always good jumping on here, talking some smack and uh, <laughs> hopefully providing a touch of value to our listeners yeah, out there. Talking and, uh... smack and a touch of value. Love it. <laughs> anyway, we hope you guys enjoy today's little chit chat. Uh, yeah, we will see you again next week for the next episode of the Make It Epic Bye. Wedding Podcast. Bye.